Hello friends, today we're doing a front brake job on the 6th generation Mitsubishi Mirage. This covers vehicles made from 2012 to current. This vehicle in other regions is marketed under different names such as the Mitsubishi Adirage or the Mitsubishi Space Star. This tutorial also covers the sedan version which is marketed as the Mitsubishi Adirage G4 or the Mitsubishi Mirage G4 depending on what market you're in. We will start off by talking about what tools and parts are needed. The tools we'll need are as follows. We'll need a 21 millimeter socket to remove the lug nuts to take the tire off. You will need a 14 millimeter socket to remove the caliper slide pins to be able to remove the caliper from the caliper bracket. I recommend you buy a torque wrench so you can tighten these bolts back to spec. You'll need a breaker bar or some type of wrench to remove these bolts. Uh, you'll need a piston compressor to push the piston back in as your new brake pads are thicker than the worn ones you're replacing. It's recommended that you use brake lubricant for the slide pins. Um, I recommend you buy anti-seize to, uh, to prevent the rotor from rust welding itself to the hub. You will need a flathead screwdriver to help you remove the old brake hardware so you can install new brake hardware. Optionally, you can buy brake clean spray so you can clean the rotor and other components, you know, shop towels or paper towels, and the other miscellaneous items. Uh, with regards to parts, you'll need brake pads. Normally, they're sold as one set of four pads, and you will need two rotors. Optionally, like me, you can buy lug nuts, you can buy New slide pins, and you can buy new slide pins, bushings, and boots, as those are sort of wear components. Uh, in total, if you want to buy all parts and tools, it'll be about $472. If you were to just buy the parts, assuming you already had the tools, those tools are obviously reusable, it's only $85 Canadian. So compared to a local Midas Auto, you could save about $330 Canadian dollars by doing this job yourself. We will start off by installing the new slide pin bushings I have purchased on top of the new slide pins I have purchased. Note that you need two slide pins per caliper per side of the vehicle, and only the lower slide pin has two bushings on it per side, of course. The reason I purchased new slide pin bushings is because this is my first brake job on this vehicle, and if the previous owner had serviced this vehicle and they had used the incorrect lubricant or grease to lubricate the slide pin. The bushings, which you see me installing here, may have swollen, which may result in the caliper binding or the brakes dragging. Of course, this is undesirable as the pad may wear unevenly and the brakes may be more difficult to apply. Here is a diagram of the brake caliper on this vehicle. I know it may be intimidating at first, but it really isn't. Note that numbers three and four in this diagram are the slide pins, which I've just shown you. Number five is the slide pin bushing, which we have just installed. Uh, numbers three and four are the slide pins, which are the only bolts we will be removing as part of this tutorial. Of course, um, number 10 is the uh, rubber boot which we will also be replacing and number nine is called the brake hardware and number eight is referred to as the brake pads. Uh, number seven in this diagram does not actually exist as the hardware is integrated with the pads with the pads I've chosen to install today. Now we're gonna start off by jacking the car up. Remember to only jack the car up on a relatively level, relatively stable surface. We will start off by installing our wheel chocks on the rear wheels as we will only be jacking the car up from the front. Here you can see the diagram of where you should jack the car up from. Ideally you jack it up from the front cross member, but since my jack is kind of cheap, kind of small, I'm uh, unable to reach the front cross member, so I jack the car up one side at a time. Here you can see the four locations where jack stands can be installed. We will only be using the front two locations. Note that the jack stand should go between the two notches. 
We will start off by loosening the lug nuts on the front wheels. We do this because when the car is in the air, it'll be very hard to loosen these lug nuts as the wheel will just spin. Remember to try and give the car a good shake before you start working on it to make sure the jack stands are secure as you see me doing here. Here you will see me test the wheel both horizontally and vertically for play to see if the wheel bearing or ball joints are bad. I do this on both sides. Now you will see me through the powers of YouTube magic, remove these lug nuts very quickly and I will kick the wheel to try and Get it off. Here you will see me form an optional step of testing all the lug studs by hand to make sure that none of them are cross threaded or damaged. I only do this because the previous owner told me one of the lug studs was bad. Now you will see me turn the steering wheel to get better access to this brake caliper. Here you can see me test that the caliper slide pin bolts are in fact 14 millimeters. Now you will see me use a breaker bar and the 14 millimeter socket to loosen our two caliper slide pin bolts. And then I remove it the rest of the way by hand, as seen shown here. Note that if you're going to be using the caliper slide fan bolts, try not to let them touch the dirty ground and leave them on some sort of piece of paper towel like I do here. Also note that as the diagram depicted, the lower caliper slide fan bolt does have the two bushings. Remember that these two slide fan bolts are the only thing holding this caliper to the caliper bracket. So after removing them, you want to use a bungee cord to support the caliper. The brake line is not designed to support the weight of the caliper. You may damage it. Here you will see me hang the caliper from the suspension spring to the top caliper slide pin hole. Here you will see me remove the outer brake pad using a flathead screwdriver. Note that the inner brake pad is mounted to the caliper bracket behind the rotor and not attached to the caliper, which is suspended on the bungee cord. Here you can see me unbox my wire brush and clean the caliper. I pay particular attention to the area where the outer brake pad touches the caliper as I want the outer brake pad to sit flush the caliper. I also spray some brake clean on a piece of paper towel to help clean up the caliper. I would like to mention that while cleaning the caliper, you should pay extra attention to the area around the piston. If it is leaking brake fluid or if the rubber uh, piston seal is either worn, damaged, or torn, you should consider replacing the caliper altogether or replacing that C 
seal if you have the know-how to do so. Uh, you should not uh, continue using a caliper with a worn or damaged piston seal. Note that I pay special attention here to cleaning this uh, piston seal and inspecting it as it will be compressed back into itself. It's very important that it is clean. Here you will see me pull off the inner brake pad from the caliper mounts and I will use the brake pad tool to push back the uh, piston with a brake pad in the caliper but the piston sits flush with the rest of the caliper and then I will continue cleaning up the caliper. Now I will pull off the rotor, if your rotor is stuck, consider using a sledgehammer, and then I will pull off the uh, rubber boots for our caliber slide pins, and I will use a flathead screwdriver to remove the brake hardware top and bottom for the inner brake pad only, because only the inner brake pad has any brake hardware, and then I will continue using the wire brush to clean the caliper mounts. Here you will see me use some paper towel to try and clean out some of the old grease that is inside the caliper slide pin holes. I personally do not spray any brake clean inside of these caliper slide pin holes because I do not want to dry out whatever grease may still be in there as that may cause the pins to seize up in my personal opinion. And now you will see me clean the hub surface with our wire brush. Not, now you will see me clean the, where the brake hardware goes as it's very important that the inner pad slides smoothly. I will also put a small amount of copper anti-seize underneath the brake hardware for future removal of this brake hardware to make it a little bit easier. I use the back of my screwdriver to tap the brake hardware in place and then I will place a small amount of copper antithesis on top of the brake hardware. This is purely a personal preference. While you don't see me doing it in this video, I'd like to point out that while you have the wheel off, now is a great time to check that drive shaft, also called CV axle rubber boot, is still intact and not leaking, that the inner tie rod and the lower ball joints also look okay and undamaged, and that your McPherson suspension strut also looks like it hasn't been leaking. I will also place copper anti-seize on the hub face to prevent the brake disc we will be installing from rust welding itself to the hub for, to make future removal of the brake disc easier. Now we will unbox our new brake rotors. I will be spraying both sides of this rotor with brake paint and wiping it off as some rotors are shipped with oil on them to prevent them from rusting before they reach the customer. While I do this, I would like to briefly mention that if you have a 2012 to 2016 Mitsubishi Mirage, it is possible to upgrade to the 2017 and onward uh, braking system. You can get a one inch larger rotor all you would need to do is change the brake caliper mount with the 2017 or newer model. Now you will see me place the rotor on top of the hub. You will see me install a single lug nut as well 
on the top to make sure that the rotor stays flush with the hub, which will make it easier to install our brake caliper. Now we will unbox our brake pads. Now the outer and inner pads are different. The outer pads have a metal bracket on the back, which holds them to the caliper. I like to install the outer pad first. It just slides on, as shown here. After that, we will put on our inner pad. It slides onto the caliper bracket behind the rotor, as shown here. Now you will see me install the caliper slide pin boots. This comes with the Carlson brake hardware kits. This is an optional step as the old ones could have been reused. These boots are important as they prevent dust from settling on top of the caliper slide pin and seizing the pin up. Note that both the top and bottom slide pin have a boot and they mount to the caliper bracket which is still attached to the car. Now we will be reinstalling our caliper. Make sure that when you position the caliper you do not damage the boots we just installed and to make sure that the boots are still lined up with the caliper slide pin holes and not bent out of a place. You want about one small thin line of grease per slide pin. Note that the top slide pin has no bushings and the bottom slide pin is the one with two bushings. Also try not to get grease on the threads as that may affect the torque spec of the bolts. Now I will start these two bolts by hand using the socket. Note if you have an air bubble behind one of the slide pin bolts as I do with the top bolts right now. Like you see in the video, you're going to pull it out and put it back in like I do. Um, also note that after you have tightened these bolts down, you want to make sure that the uh, boot that sits between the caliper and the caliper bracket is not bent out of shape and that the boot is correctly stretched across from the small lip on the bolt to the caliper bracket. Now I will tighten both of these bolts using a torque wrench to 32 foot-pounds. Now I will test that the brake rotor does move freely and that the pads are not rubbing, just purely visually. Now we are done the brake job. I'm going to remove the one nut previously installed to hold the rotor in place. And I'm going to put the wheel back on the car.
Now I will tighten the lug nuts down by hand and I will use a torque wrench to torque them down in a crisscross pattern to 72 foot pounds. To note that I torque the wheel while it's in the air out of personal preference. So I think while the car is on the ground, it may be possible to torque the lug nuts down without the wheel sitting flush with the car. That's purely a personal preference type thing. This is the end of the tutorial for the front brake job. How you just must repeat all these steps for the other side of the car. Thank you for watching.